All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about some of my top tips for saving time and effort when modeling and layout. So these are gonna be things that can save you a ton of time, not only when modeling and creating plans in layout, but also there's some things you can do inside of SketchUp to save time as well. So I wanted to talk through some of my top tips for saving time and making things easier when you're working in these two programs. And today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture. The SketchUp Essentials for Architecture is a course I created to give you a complete step-by-step -step instruction on creating construction documents from your 3D SketchUp models. So we start at the very beginning and I talk about the right way to model and set up your SketchUp model so that it's ready for layout. And then I actually walk you through the process showing you every step along the way. And then from there, I'm gonna show you exactly how to create a number of different kinds of plans from that model so you can be confident in creating professional looking plans from your SketchUp models. If that's something you're interested in, you can check that out at the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture.com. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I want to start off with a couple SketchUp tips that can save you time when you're setting your models up for layout. Before we get started, model credit for this model is the Craftsman House from Paul Wall. So you can search Craftsman House Paul Wall in the 3D warehouse and go find this and download it and follow along if you'd like. And so the first thing I want to talk about is when you're working in your models, a lot of the time um, you either need certain views or you need to be able to access certain parts of your model. So like for example, right now if I need to work on the first floor of this model, it can be a little bit tricky getting in there and working on this, um, but it's something that you're going to have to do a lot of different times because you're really going to need to get into this model and access that first floor to work on your floor plans. So my first tip is to set up working views for each level. So for example, I have a working view right here that basically has all of the layers on my second floor turned off so I can get in here and access this really quickly. And so if you have multiple different things that you're going to be accessing over and over again, um, you can set up views to get back to those really quickly. So like for example, right now I'm in my working view level one. Well, I also have a working view level two so I can get in and I can edit things inside of level two really quickly. And then I also have a working view for my exterior. So if I need to make any changes on the exterior, you set these views up and then you can get in here and make the changes that you need to make. And so one other thing to note about this is you're going to want to set these views up with a lightweight style. So whatever your style is, you're going to want to set that up where your profiles are turned off. So this isn't coming in here and trying to render this or render those extra profiles and edges and take extra time. You really want this to be a lightweight view where you can get in here and you can make changes really quickly. So tip two is a lot of the time you're going to want to create straight up and down elevation views of your building. Whether that's going to be an overall exterior elevation or an interior elevation, you're going to want to create a straight up and down view of them. And we've talked about turning on parallel projection so that you can get that straight up and down view with no perspective lines or anything like that. So you are going to want to make sure that your model is set to parallel projection view. But one of the things that you might have thought is that you need to come in here and you need to add section planes for all of those different elevations. And I'm just going to go into my style real quick and turn off section fills. But the problem with adding a whole bunch of different section planes in here to get different views, things start getting really crowded really quick. So you have to like manage all of your different section cuts and then these planes are in here and you have to make sure your style has section planes turned off so they're not getting in the way of your camera. So you can definitely create those elevation views by taking a section cut and then setting your camera up straight up and down like this. But there's an easier way to do that. And the easier way to do that is going to be, you can come in here and you can turn on parallel projection. And then within your large tool set, there's a tool called position camera. What position camera does is it allows you to set your camera from a first person standpoint looking at a different area. But the other thing this will do, and I'm going to go to my working view level one, is this will allow you to basically use a clipping plane to see just a part of the model that's in front of your camera and nothing behind it. So the way that works, and again this only works if you have parallel projection turned on, is you just access this tool and then you just find the point that you'd like your camera to start from and then you 
you click and hold and you move your mouse until it's on one of the axes. So you can see how I'm clicking and holding and this is on my green axis. Well now when I let up, what that's gonna do is that's gonna clip out everything that was behind my camera view. So you can see how like the shape of the refrigerator and other things like that is getting clipped out based on this view. So you can use this to create whatever elevation view you'd like without having to add a bunch of section planes. And like for example, if I don't want this cabinet and this refrigerator to block that, I'll just move my camera a little bit closer and then I'll just do this again. And you can see how with that one, I forgot to turn on parallel projection. Well, all I have to do is just go up to camera and click on parallel projection. And you can see how I've got this great interior elevation view that I can use without having to add a section plate in here. All right, so now let's go over into layout. And so what I've got is I've got a new sheet here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna insert those elevation views that we just talked about as viewports. So I'm gonna go over into layout and I'm gonna insert a viewport. And within this viewport, I'm gonna set my scale so that this is scaled properly. And then I'm gonna resize my window. So another time-saving tip on working in layout is you don't always have to click and drag objects in order to do your fine adjustments. So this can be a little bit frustrating because this does the same thing that objects do in SketchUp where it tries to inference based off of axes and things like that. Well, sometimes you don't want to move your mouse around in order to do this. What you can do instead is you can select an object by single clicking on it and you can tap arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge objects left and right. So like for example, if I click the or if I tap the right arrow key over and over again, you can see how this is moving to the right. So instead of me having to click in here and fight the inference engine and all of that to make sure that I'm moving this the proper direction, I can just use my arrow keys to move this around wherever I want it to go. And another part of that tip is if you hold the shift key, your nudge distance is gonna get much larger. So you can do a lot of fine adjustment and also larger adjustment by holding the shift key and then letting up on the shift key. So like for example, if I wanted to move this down, I would just hold shift and tap the down arrow key and then I could tap the right arrow key while letting that shift button up in order to fine adjust this location. So using the nudge function with the arrows on your keyboard can be really helpful when you're trying to do just a quick little adjustment of where objects are. So another tip that can be really helpful when working inside of layout is using the crosshairs in order to move your objects because one of the things that can get a little bit tricky is trying to get things to align with other things so for example let's say that I was to come in here and I was to try to align this notes box with my other notes box. So you can see how I have a title box up here, then I have a notes box right here. And I can kind of move this around, but you can see how it's not really like locking to anything or anything like that. You can see I'm kind of getting this point after I move my mouse around a whole bunch. Well, let's say that I wanted to take this object and place it on this corner right here. Well, an easier way to do that would be to grab by clicking and dragging this crosshair inside of this box, and that makes that the primary point that everything's inferencing off of. So now, if I move this up, I can move this to wherever I want, and I can use that corner point as my locking point. So you can see how I could lock this to like this corner, or if I move my mouse up here, I can find the corner right here really easily. The crosshair can be really helpful for aligning different objects. So another thing you can do to save time, and this is how we set up our title blocks inside of a layout, is you can use what's known as shared layers. And so what shared layers are, is those are layers that are shared across multiple different pages. And so most often where you see this used is you see this used in your title blocks and your page layout. So if you've ever clicked on an object, like for example, if I click on this grid line, you can see how the selection is blue. Well, the reason for that is because that's only on this page. But if I come over here, and click on this, the selection is red. Well, whenever you click on something and the selection is red, what that means is that means this is being shared across multiple different pages. It means it's on a shared layer. And so a shared layer can be turned on by going into your layers section and clicking on the little sheet right here. If you look at this, you can see how my cover page layer or my unique elements layer has a single page on here. That means that anything that's on that layer is only gonna show up on one page. But 
this layer has two pages on there and what that's indicating is that means that layer is being shared across multiple different pages. So that means that this is now going to show up on every inside page and you can set this up so it doesn't show up on your cover page but like for example if I click between my floor plan and my interior elevations you can see how whatever's on this layer on the first page is on the second page as well. So let's come in here and let's say we were to just move this line around. So let's say we move this line up so that it's right under the text. You can see how when I make that change, then I go back to my first page, that change has been reflected here. If I move it back down, and then I go back to my next page, you can see how that change has been reflected on the other page as well. So what this allows us to do is this allows us to create things that repeat across pages. And now if I need to make a change, I don't have to do it across my entire plan set. I just have to change it once and then it'll change across the other pages as well. And so on top of that, not only can you use shared layers to share information across pages, you can also use what's known as auto text. So sometimes there's information that you need to store on multiple different pages or that you need to be able to access later. So like for example, if I click in this box, you can see how this is showing my address or my example address. Well, if I double click on that, you can see how actually there isn't a whole bunch of text in here. Instead, there's just a couple of names inside of brackets. And so what those are doing is those are actually referencing auto text, which you can see by going up to file document setup and clicking on the button for auto text. And basically what auto text is, is that's different values that have been added in here, almost like variables in the sense that you can change them here. So let's say I was to come in here and change this address to 5555 example street. If you watch, this will actually update over here because these are referencing back to what's inside of your auto text. So you can use this to create custom tags in here. So like for example, I've created a custom tag with some test text in here. And so if I was to come in here and add a text box and I was to type in Justin's tag and note that these are case sensitive you can see how this is going to reference back to whatever I have applied to the Justin's tag tag in here and so this can be useful for a lot of different things when setting up different values across your project but also for referencing page numbers so what you can do is let's say for example Right now I've added in a title for my pages across multiple different pages. So you can see how this is showing up on page one and page two. The problem with this though is if I was to come in here and adjust this drawing name to something like floor plan, because it's set on that repeating layer, if I go onto my elevations page, you can see how I can't manually add the word um, elevations in here because this is only going to be able to show one value. However, if we were to reference that using auto text, so instead of typing in a page name, if I was to type in page name, and click off of this, this is actually going to pull the page name from your pages section. So you can see how this one would be floor plan because my name of the page is floor plan. This one would be interior elevations because the name of my page is interior elevations. So in addition, you could also set this up where this number at the bottom references a page number. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna pull your page number from inside of your pages section. And so you could set up a title for each page in here and then use auto text to set this up where this would automatically place the name and the number inside of your sheets. Sometimes when you're working inside of layout and you're just moving around and you're clicking on different things, you may accidentally click and drag your viewport and move it so that things aren't aligned anymore, which can get really frustrating. Well, a very simple way to fix that is to put Put those viewports on their own layers and then just click on the lock button. So once you click on the lock button, you can't accidentally move this anymore. So my recommendation is to lock any layers that you're not working on so that you're not accidentally clicking and misaligning things inside of your um, inside of your sheets. So like I would lock my grid lines layer and now I can't accidentally move my grid lines in here when I'm trying to work. So lock all layers that you're not currently working in inside of your model. 
So another recommendation I have is when you create a page type, save it as a template. So if you have multiple different page types that, um, if you have multiple different page types that you keep coming back to, you want to save those as template files so you can access them quickly later. So like for example, if I go into File New and I look at my templates, I have a number of different templates that I've created for different kinds of pages. So if I want to bring in like a 3x3 three three detail sheet, I've created this as a template file so that I can access it later. And so what this does is this allows you to get all of your sheets set up early and then when you want to create new sheets you just have those sitting in there so you can save things like styles and page sizes and everything else you just set up a sheet to the way that you like it and then you just do a file save as template and what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to save that so you can access it later and anything you save inside of your my templates you can access by doing a file new and just clicking on my templates and you can see how all of those sheets that I've created are in there so don't waste time recreating the wheel but instead create it once save it and then use it in the future so in the same way I want to talk a little bit about scrapbooks. So scrapbooks are a huge time saver because they allow you to save different things. So like for example, I have a drawing references file and most of these are just pulled from the default layout scrapbooks that you can find down below. But these are all things that I use consistently inside of my plans. So like for example, if I wanted to add a notation of some sort onto this page, you can see how I've saved that inside my scrapbook. So then all I have to do is just drag it in you can see I can drag that in on my notes layer and I have a note and I have the bubble already created in here so scrapbooks allow you to not have to recreate these over and over again so I didn't have to come in and draw the bubble or add the note I just saved this in here and I can access that later and this can be especially helpful for things like general notes so like for example and I think this is a site note but if you have general notes for different municipalities that you work with so like these are some sanitary sewer general notes you can create those and save them inside of a scrapbook to drag them in later instead of having to recreate them over and over again. So if you have general notes like this, I would recommend saving them in a scrapbook. So all you do is you just edit that scrapbook and you just create the object inside of that scrapbook and then you save it. So you just save that scrapbook and now this is going to show up as an option later on. So anything that you're reusing, I recommend saving it in your scrapbook for reuse later. So the last thing I want to talk about can be a huge time saver when you're working with different styles and things like that inside of your model. And so my recommendation is place like objects on a single layer. So right now, for example, I've placed all of my dimensions on this dimensions layer. Well, what that means is now I have dimensions and only dimensions on this layer. Well, I can come in here and I can change the style of all of them at once by just right clicking and clicking select entities. So right clicking and selecting entities is going to select everything on that layer. So what that allows me to do is if I place all of my dimensions on a single layer, and then I right click and I select them all, I can come in and edit their style and their text really easily. So like for example, these are in as decimal inches right now. Well, I want these to all be in as architectural inches. So I can just change them all at once just by selecting them all. So I would say anything that's going to have the same style, you can put on the same layer and this allows you to quickly make changes to those. So another thing I could do is I could quickly come in here and I could change the size of the text or if I wanted the leaders to be different or the way these are aligned in here to be different, I can make all of those those changes too. So anything that's going to be of a like style, place it on the same layer and then you can just really quickly select it all and start making changes. So those tips should save you a significant amount of time working in SketchUp and Layout, but I'd love to hear from you what some of your tips are that you use in order to speed up that workflow when trying to create plans inside of Layout. Um, if you're looking for more start to finish instruction on creating plans in Layout, make sure to check out the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course where we go through that start to finish step-by-step -step workflow for completely creating plans inside of Layout. You can check that out at the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture.com. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.